Hello again, everyone. Relatively speaking, again, Mark Hackle, my brother Bill Hackle, uh, talking about current topics and things that are going on. We got a great guest here with us today, um, talking about something that's kind of a current topic, and it's the Great Lakes Water Authority and some of the challenges, in particular, with some of the A community in particular, kind of not uh, paying their bills. But before we get into all the details on that, kind of highlight it and kind of give you more explanation, understanding of what that's all about. Um, I want to introduce you to this guy here, Brian Baker. You know, when I first became county executive. One of my first uh, responsibilities was trying to find a finance director, and uh, that was a challenge. We were looking around, and you know, I was uh, doing a deep dive in some of the municipalities, and uh, this was one of the guys I was first targeting. I tried to figure out if he was willing to come on board, and uh, he reluctantly uh, turned me down, only because I don't think he was done with Sterling Heights just yet. Uh, but I was really trying to get him. We had Pete Provenzano for a while, yep. and I know you know Pete. Yep. He's a pretty good guy. And uh, we tried to bring in Pete from the city of Roseville. He came in, did a great job of kind of getting our finances in order, uh, but Brian was one of those guys that eventually did uh, leave the city of Sterling Heights and uh, landed with Candace Miller, our public works director. That's right. And you're doing what with her right now, Brian? So I am her chief deputy. So when she won the election in November of 16, she gave me a call, probably through your connections and uh, you getting me into the GLWA. But since January 1st, I've been her chief deputy. Yes, so it's she, been going she great. She loves you. I got to tell you, she thinks, she, she thinks highly of you. And uh, it was interesting because that race itself, was very controversial, and I know I came out early on and supported her. In fact, the day she announced she was running, I supported her for Public Works, only because we knew we needed some changes and uh, focus on what was going on with the underground and uh, cleaning, you know, cleaning it up. And the, there was not much of a relationship with us, our Department of Roads and Public Works. But I got to tell you, overnight, not just with that sinkhole issue they had over there on 15 Mile Road, but right. the relationship was uh, I, I solidified. I mean, we were able to have those conversations. So. Big challenges with the politics and dealing with, uh, you know, the former public works director. But we're so glad Candace is there, and I know she's happy to have you there. And yeah. uh, one of the issues that we brought up, and it was dealt with a lot of legal challenges, was this Great Lakes Water Authority. And uh, what a unique, uh, I guess, venture that was. Um, that was yeah, one of my first I mean, tasks. Yeah. You would have been at Sterling Heights when they got formed, correct? Yes. Yeah, Mark kind of got me. I think Pete was leaving at the time, so he wanted someone to kind of fly spec what was going on. This was in 14, 2014. So that's when I kind of got involved in doing some due diligence on the issue. And then uh, when it came to determine who was going to approve the lease and all that, then the body was formed and the government structure and all that, and uh, Mark appointed me to the board. Okay, that was created by the legislature through the bankruptcy system? or what? Well, it was really the state created it through the bankruptcy yeah. and, and the courts <laughs> and all that. So, no, yeah, it was not the legislature. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we could have some fun on that topic. Yeah, right? oh boy, I'll tell you, I remember it vividly. It was, it was one of my first tasks getting on in 2014, and again, this all thing right. was uh, kind of it was uh, there was a forced direction. There's no question there was an opportunity here to try to figure out how do we write uh, you know the ship of what was going on with the Detroit water system. And uh, there were many opportunities. And again, I think even Brooks Patterson back then, the late Brooks Patterson, he was pushing to figure out if there was an opportunity to have better control and uh, have a voice in our rates and things that were going on. And you know the system was broken. And you know credit to, to Mike Duggan at the time too. He realized there's an opportunity, but he wanted something out of this as well. You know there was some kind of a payment uh, that he was going to be getting directly from the ratepayers to help out the city of Detroit with their issues. And, uh, you know, uh, Judge Cox kind of led the way in trying to bring the parties together to have these discussions as to how this was going to look. You know, even Brooks was talking about, you know, at that time, first, you know, no, no deal is better th than a bad deal, you know. And so with that, uh, they finally came together, came up with a decision as to we're going to create this thing. It was, and uh -huh. there was a fight between myself and the public works director at the time. Um, and with that, it was over that appointment. And uh, he wanted to make the appointment. And I'm thinking, no, all the other counties are making the appointment through their executive. And so is the mayor of the city of Detroit. That's got to be, according to charter, the, through the executive's office. And we turned to the locals because I looked at it as a county doesn't buy the water. You know, we don't send out the bill to the residents. Right. Municipalities do. And in conversation with yourself as well as the other municipalities, we had to find the person that they wanted. And uh, they all said to me that you were the guy. And so they said, you know what, Brian's a guy that really understands the finances. He'll do the deep dive and fly yeah. back, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, on behalf of the ratepayers. And uh, yeah. that's exactly what you've been doing since day one on yeah. that board. So you've yeah. been there since 16? Well, since 16, yeah. So GLWA, what, what happened was Detroit Water and Sewer got split. Detroit went their own way as a local system, and GLWA took over the regional authority. They're the provider of water and sewer services. 
So um, we did our due diligence, and actually Macomb was the only one who voted against the lease agreement. And we had a couple concerns back then, um, still exist today, although I think we've seen some benefit to it. I mean, certainly the rate, the charges, the increases that we've seen have, have been much lower than what Detroit was doing. That's the good thing. We were concerned about the $50 million lease payment annually that the communities are now paying to the city of Detroit, and that's over 40 years, so that's $2 billion. That's the buy the system. That's the buy. So we, we thought we could get a better deal. Um, we didn't like the governance structure. You know, Detroit had two seats on the board. We only had one. Um, and it, it gets to the Highland Park issue. Highland Park owed money then, and we'll get into that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's an, it's an ongoing issue. It was ongoing at the time. Right. They owed, yeah. when, before this was created, they were behind in payment to Detroit. That's right. They Correct. were a customer of Detroit. That's right. I think they were, for, were they not forced to be a customer of Detroit? On the water side, they were. Right. Okay. Correct. Yes. But not on the sewer. Sewer, they had always been a customer of Detroit. Okay. Yeah. So they stopped paying their bills about 10 years ago. So when GLWA was being formed, their debt at that time was about $20 million. So Mark, to his credit, said, well, you know, the state is really forming GLWA. Why? We need to solve this Highland Park issue once and for all to stop the bleeding. At the time. Right. And lo and behold, look at us now. We're at sixty-three million dollars that Highland Park hasn't paid. Is that the number now? Yeah, that is the number in the Overall. charges is that through water next and year. Sewer? Yeah, it's predominantly sewer, but it's water oh, really? and sewer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, kind of, they, they read the paper, and it sounds like they're not paying the water bill. It's mostly the sewer bill. Yeah, people. I think generically, people say water bill. Okay. Right? But it's, it's lumped in most of it. Your sewer bill, actually, but it's water and sewer. And in in, in in Macomb County, we're talking about fifteen million. I mean, uh, yeah, that's right. So, um, GLWA, you know, we're not trying to harm GLWA. There has been, there was a federal rate settlement that said bad debt gets charged to the customers. So GLWA is passing those charges on, as the, as the court order said. Unfortunately, it's a community that isn't paying the bills. Was paying about fifty percent of it. And then as of last year, stopped paying anything. So that's really when that debt took off. And GLWA is passing those charges on right. to two suburbs. All right. So how much of this would you say is pre, and I'm not counting interest. Are you guys counting interest no. in this? Okay. No. So of the $63 million, how much of it is prior to 216 and how much of it is since 216? Um, I would say it's probably about 40 per, well, a third, well, a third of it, right? It was 20 million okay. back in, right. in 16. So after that, it's grown $40 million. And, uh, despite all of our efforts, I mean, we've been at Macomb has been on this and, you know, from day one. And Brian's been bringing it to the attention of the locals as well as obviously Candace Miller, myself, and, uh, you know, they're aware of it. And so with that, you know, there's a controversy and people are saying, okay, when is this going to end? You know, the question is twofold. One is... Are we going to get the? Are we going to get? You know, are we, are we going to get paid for what uh, you know we put into it for Highland Park? And uh, well, how do we how do we prevent this from happening? Are they going to start paying their bills? You right. Know? And and the question I have is I don't know if it's been answered yet. If you've been able to figure that out, but my understanding is the residents are paying their bills. I've heard mixed messages. I think in general they are, and it's really the city officials who are not passing those dollars on to the wholesaler. Wow. So, you know, they have, they've succeeded, right? Over 10 years, they have not had to pay their full amount. And they've spent probably millions on attorneys. Well, I mean, technically, you're not supposed to make money off water. No, you no. Get, you get an administrative fee. But I think this way the state law works. Not for profit. It not, it's basic, unless you run a for-profit water organization. And right. We can say what we want, but Great Lakes this Water is not, is not a profit, profit, pro, no, for-profit organization. Right. So they, it's the cost of basically intaking, cleaning the water. You know, the sewer is take, it taking it in and cleaning it out, booting it out, and all the chemicals, and you got to pay all the workers and everything else. And then there's a bit of a fee um, by statute they're entitled to. It's 
like an administrative fee, like most government agencies charge. Not very right. high. Yeah, and right. I don't think there's um, any dispute. Not a lot. But, you know, most yeah. people don't like their rates to begin with. They get upset about that. But that is what it is. And I think there's justification for the rates. You know, if it, you know, you get down to it. But the reality is, what people are getting tired of paying is that uh, that overage. You know, paying for the the debt of Highland Park. Yeah. And so that became a question for the locals. And so now we found Western Wayne and uh, many of the municipalities in Macomb County have joined on and said, hey, you know what, uh, we're, we're going to put that, uh, you know, we're, we're putting that money in, 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 in abeyance right now. We're not going to, yeah. we're not going to forward the, that part of the payment. Right. And that's creating somewhat of a concern for Great Lakes Water Authority. Yeah, I'm, you know, it, it all started in, in Wayne in terms of the withholding. We're telling our communities if they're going to withhold, only withhold the July amount. So it's about 10% of the total amount. We don't want to harm GLW's bond ratings. They have a bond sale coming up this summer. And oh, explain do they? that. And explain that. Most, most people don't understand what that means. And so they're, you know, most people just say, I'd oh, be damned with this. You know, we're not going to yeah. pay that heck with it. But they don't realize that that's going to be a problem for, for us. For all as the well. shareholders. Yeah. Right. I mean, if the bond rating gets downgraded, they pay a higher interest rate on the bonds. Three Hundred million of bonds, and about half of their budget is debt. So they're a highly leveraged organization that needs to borrow money. So oh, is, is Great Lakes Water Authority in default on anything? Default? No, absolutely Are they not. Even close? No. no, no so, no, no. so really, the, their credit rating should be very good because they always pay their bills. Well, they're coming out of bankruptcy, right? So that that was a high hurdle in order to restore their well, credit the, rating. That, that was, the, but it's still that sure, legacy. Yeah, yeah well, it's they, the well, legacy. they're still holding that, and that's. Um, they should actually be kind of happy, at least the, the bond, the Moody's people, so to speak, the bond people, should be kind of happy the organizational structure changed and they're getting everything paid. Oh, yeah, no, it's absolutely yeah. absolutely an improvement. But, uh, you know, the, the very odd thing is Highland Park officials believe they should be paying a fixed water and sewer rate from 1996 in, in perpetuity. Is there, now, that's the circuit court case. That's up in front of in the Court of Appeals right now, correct? The Court of Appeals right now is the 2014. So we had a judgment against Highland Park for $21 million. It was supposed to be a final order of a judgment. Um, Highland Park, for whatever reason, sued then DWSD and GLWA, and the judge um, approved a second case evaluation. And the case evaluation came back and said, Highland Park, um, Detroit owes you a million dollars. And we all said, okay, great. Instead of $21 million that they owe us, it's now 20 Highland Park said, no, that was a final judgment. Not only do we not owe you $21 million, you that's owe what, us. Okay, that's so their argument? Yes, all the attorneys yes. were, that's not what the case evaluation was. It was an offset to the 21, not a final resolution. So that's what's up at a court of appeals. And, and uh, to Mark's credit and Canis's credit, they've filed an, an amicus brief, you know, is the um, so what's this the 1996 agreement? Is that what Detroit Water? Well, you know, back in the day there was federal legislation or federal oversight. Judge Fikens. Oh right? yeah, and oh, then Judge I, I'm Cox. very familiar. Right, with Judge so Fikens in the water case. There was a whole bunch of uh, the Clean Water Act stuff, and you know, Highland Park is a poor community. They lost, you know, Chrysler back in the day, the headquarters and some plants. So there was an agreement that that. That that set a floor of, of what their rates had to be in 1996, not a cap. So they said this was the amount you have to pay, but nowhere did the court say You're, those costs aren't going to go up every year. All of the costs go up every year. We're all paying it. Oh. So they're mistaken. They, they hit a home run on this case evaluation. We've won other judgments. But... At this point, we're really just trying to get the state involved to well, come, the come to the table. Did the judge in the circuit court say, yeah, they give a million and that's it? Um, in the Wayne County Circuit Court, they did. That's what, the ju okay, judge so the judge didn't, judge didn't say subtract one million, you owe 20. Judge says... Judge bought so, Highland Park's argument that everyone thought this was a final resolution. And even the hmm. um, case evaluators have affidavits saying, no, 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 that was never the intent. It was an offset, not a total write-off. Yeah, so, and so I guess the question then becomes, okay, if, uh, if that is the rate they're paying and there is, no, there is no Highland Park debt, then why are we paying that as part of our rates? That becomes the other part of the conversation. Right. If well, the circuit that, court judge is right, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. that's the number. Right. And the argument would be, 
Great Lakes Water Authority, you're stuck with that number. You cannot come in and charge me the extra if the judge says that's all they owe. Right. It right. no longer is a bad debt. Right. Right. So then the 2012 agreement says bad debt gets charged to everyone. Well, if it's not a bad debt, Why are we being it's charged? an overcharge. Right. So we all get a refund of $63 million. Which would just crush the Great Lakes Water Authority. Which would crush GLWA. Right. However, if GLWA wants to make that up, there's another part of the story that. <laughs> Detroit is now not sharing Got it. in these Highland Park sewer debt. Oh. It would drag them into it. It would theoretically drag them into it. Right. So they should be on board with what we're trying to do at the state level. Yeah. Well, I'm actually surprised that we're not seeing a lot of involvement at this point in time, not, not recognizing that that potentially could be a problem for the city of Detroit, uh, as well as Oakland County. I haven't yet to hear any of the, uh, uh, the outcry from municipalities in Oakland County. I know Western Wayne is fully on board. I think uh, Warren Evans is even dealing with that right now, uh, trying to at least you know, have conversations with those municipalities and even, right. even the Great Lakes Water Authority. But, uh, you know, we've reached out. We're trying to get uh, the state uh, involved in this. And I know Candace and I are going to be talking to some of our legislatures to kind of get their input into this to figure out, hey, what can the state do to bring these folks to the table and have conversation? Or is this just going to continue to drag out in a court uh, process? Yeah. And that, once again, is just going to really create a, a lot of problems for the locals uh, yeah. saying, wait a minute, we're, we're not going to continue to pay this. Are, is anybody in the state itself. legislature showing an interest to address this issue? Yes, there are. Yeah, okay. there are There are several. I don't want to just identify anyone just particular because yeah. then it you know, at least about, but yes, we've had conversations with several and uh, they are interested in trying to figure out, you know, how do they... You know, what about the people? Because um, you got to get... Uh, you got to get a majority of both houses where most people live up... Uh, North of this. We're at the beginning of those conversations. Okay. So we're, we're still at the... Uh, <laughs> well, let me, let me say, though, GLWA services 4 million people in the right. state of Michigan. That's 40% of the state. That's a, should a, get the a lot attention. of people that are interested in resolving this. And, mm -hmm. you know, they have some federal money there. We're not asking for all the money. I mean, I'll... I'd love to get sixty-three million. Yeah. Right. I mean, I start, start there. I got my own water. You system, have your own so water and sewer plant. You're right. Not my issue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> but well, let me tell you. I got this, my own issue. <laughs> let me tell you why the state has some responsibility on this. In 2012, Highland Park's water plant stopped working, so the state requested DWSD back in the day to provide temporary water service to Highland Park. It's only going to be for a couple of days until the state could get their plan up and running. Well, guess what? We're still providing the service, not getting any revenue. The plan's not going to reopen anytime soon. It's not cost effective to do that. Yeah. You know? So the question is, okay, where are we at today? You know, where 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 does this lead us right now? And uh, you know, I think there's, I think the move that Western Wayne made, as well as uh, what Macomb County, um, you know, some of the municipalities in, in Macomb County are doing, is bringing this to the forefront now. I think you're re they're recognizing. Uh, we're not just going to continue to sit and be silent like, you know, we've kind of somewhat have seen for the last 10 years, uh, aside from your efforts on that board, um, which I think sometimes have gone ignored. And with that being said, now that we've kind of pushed, Candace and I have had some press conferences along with the locals. Uh, we intend upon doing the same thing with some of our legislatures. Uh, I think you're going to start to see some movement, uh, you know, whether it's through the courts and or even from state involvement, because uh, yeah. this has to get resolved, you know, Questions. one way or another. Flint obligated to dip into this? Just on the water side, they're not a sewer customer, so they're... Okay, they're not a sewer, well, it's a sewer it, bill. Right, Detroit only has 1.5 million of the 63 million. Okay. Right, what does that tell you? Yeah. And Flint has even less. Yeah. It's a good bankruptcy. Right, yeah. It was a good deal for someone yeah. else other than yeah, us. Yeah, you wonder, so. wonder why. But I do have to point out, Detroit pays for its bad debt, which yeah. is a good, you know, we're at least not held responsible for that. Unfortunately, there is one out of 100 communities, Highland Park, that's not paying. And it's growing. And the courts, they've appealed. Well, you can... You, you can tell me all about how long it takes to yeah, get a court well, decision. it depends on the case, actually. But, um, yeah. Or the um, judge. Or you, no, it depends on the <laughs> difficulty, everything in the case, what they want to get done. It's it, There's a million reasons why some cases go quicker than others. Uh, Brian, we can't thank you enough. I mean, so the work that you do with Candace Miller and the work that she's been doing uh, really to help and prevent, uh, you know, those sinkholes from happening and obviously oh, yeah. keeping the, you know, the sewers flowing in the right direction, kind of away from our, our lakes and our, our tributaries and yeah. the Flint River. We can't appreciate uh, that enough. And even for keeping our rates low, because we know when she contracts and some of those bidded projects, 
are awarded to those that are the lowest bidder. And so there's nothing yeah. you know problematic going on there as she's well. So, doing, she's doing a great job. She's got a ton of projects, as you well know. Oh, you, we do. You guys talk a lot. Yes, so. he keeps coming after more of our money, which is all right. So, But again, Brian, uh, Brian Baker, uh, he's the uh, appointee on the Great Lakes Water Authority, but he's also one of uh, Candace Miller's chief deputies. We want to thank him for being here. Uh, stay tuned uh, for the information that's coming out on the Great Lakes Water Authority. And once again, uh, continue to tune into, um, relatively speaking, with my brother Bill and myself, Mark Hackle. <laughs>